What's up everyone, it's Kati with Money Vesting. In this video, we are gonna be talking about inflation. So CPI numbers are coming out bright and early on May 10th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. I will be live to cover that report. It's gonna be very, very important for the market, for the economy, for the Federal Reserve, for businesses, for individuals. This is it. This is how big it gets in the market because it is gonna be very, very important. The market's most certainly gonna react to that report and it's gonna continue on those discussions and those debates on whether inflation is slowing down, whether we're seeing inflation come down or if it's stagnating a little bit sideways or if it's gonna to start to move back up. So everything we're gonna talk about in this video as always, if you enjoyed, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. The link to our Discord and Patreon is gonna be down below if you're interested in joining us. Of course, getting access to all the finance alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, everything's gonna be included as well as the private live streams that we're doing three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and of course, a lot of private benefits as well. So link's gonna be down below. This right here is going to be that date, again, April, 2023. So this is the for the previous month. So again, inflation is a lagging indicator. So we're gonna get these numbers for the previous month. And uh, they're gonna be scheduled to release on May 10th, 2023. So I will be live to cover these numbers at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Now, this is going to be the consensus. This is what the expectations are from the market. The consensus is for headline CPI, consumer price index, on a month-over-month -month basis to increase 0.4%. Uh, Year-over-year to stay steady at 5%. In fact, last month, we see, saw a pretty significant decline for headline CPI, pretty much you know rolled over down to 5%. And right now, the consensus is that we're going to stay at these levels. And ex-food and energy also known as core CPI, the expectations are for another 0.4% increase month over month and for year over year number to come down to 5.5% from 5.6%. I'll take a look at my bear case, bull case, optimistic and base case numbers here in just a minute. And this right here are gonna be the PPI numbers, the producer price index. So again, more on the producer side, manufacturing side, what are gonna be those wholesale prices? And uh, PPI month over month uh, is gonna be expected at 0.3% year over year at 2.5%, ex food energy, so core PPI expecting 0.2% and year over year coming down to 3.3%. So wholesale prices are definitely coming down as close to the Fed's target as they can be. Uh, but of course, the Federal Reserve prefers PCE, that's a personal consumption expenditure, as their preferred measure of inflation. Uh, and of course, the market very much focuses on CPI as well. CPI more than PPI, but PPI is a good leading indicator as to where prices are potentially going to go because this is really what the wholesale prices are. This, these are like raw materials, input costs really. And if this is going to translate over to output costs to the end consumer, then you can expect those prices to eventually follow and roll over as well. So this is more of a leading indicator, but the market of course pays more attention to CPI and the Fed pays more attention to PCE. Now going over to the specific report from last month, we did see a decline in energy prices. So energy, you can see energy commodities, gasoline, fuel oil, energy services, they were all down month over month and year over year we're seeing deflation in energy. Oil prices have been coming down, natural gas prices have been coming down. And then we also saw prices for used cars and trucks also declined by 0.9% and some more deflation on the year-over-year -year basis, negative 11.2%. However, shelter is still lagging. Shelter is still up 8.2% on a year-over-year -year basis, month-over-month -month still up 0.6% um, in the month of March compared to the previous month of February. And uh, again, shelter makes up over a third of inflation, so it is a pretty big deal. If shelter prices sooner or later don't roll over, it's possible that inflation's slowdown or inflation's trend lower starts to slow down and we don't really see that aggressive move lower if shelter prices, rents continue to be a problem in the economy. Now, speaking of, uh, you know, the National Rent Index, according to apartments listing, saw uh, March and April rents increase. So we have seen a little bit of an uptick in April. They specifically mentioned that we estimate that the national median rent increased by 0.5% month over month in April. Now, we have seen a little bit of a lag effect because Jeremy Siegel has been very vocal on CNBC talking about how there is a significant lag with the actual rents, the real-time rents that we're seeing in the economy versus what the CPI is picking up on shelter prices. And if you take into account the Zillow numbers or the Redfin numbers, and even you know if you consider the apartment listing, we did see a pretty consistent four or five months 
of streak of in, uh, rents going down. In, in other words, we were seeing deflation in a shelter in rents, but that has not yet played a role in the actual CPI report. So again, if you come back to the report, shelter prices have been consistently moving higher. So this right here is gonna be that row that we're focusing on every single month coming in at 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.6. So we are seeing an increase month over month. We're not really seeing deflation on rents or shelter prices. Then that's a pretty big deal because it's a third of inflation overall. So it's a big component overall CPI. Now, Charlie Billy also mentions egg prices. So wholesale egg prices are now down over 70% from their peak back in January. And we should see a meaningful move lower in food price inflation in the next CPI report. And food prices are also a big component of overall inflation. They are the ones that are also driving or keeping at least, keeping CPI to an elevated level. So you can see that food prices over here, food and food at home, they have been on a consistent increase. Again, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. Every single month we're seeing that increase in food prices. And we've talked about this in our previous videos as well. And in March, we did see food at home decline 0.3%. And of course, egg prices absolutely went berserk and they were up like 70, 80%, like an insane amount. And we're now starting to see them come down, which obviously is a good sign. Now, going over to what Elon Musk also mentioned, and we're gonna actually come back to this. I'm gonna skip over this for now, but we're gonna focus really on this spreadsheet that I've been tracking. And what this does is that it basically tracks your grains, your agriculture, your metals, materials, energy on a month over one basis. And I've also tracked the how much they're down or up from its recent highs, from their recent peaks, and how much are they up or down year to date. So. What we have over here is a little bit of a mixed bag when it comes to food, agriculture, and grain. Um, so wheat prices, they are down 8.4% in the month of April, down over 51% from their recent highs and down 16% year to date. We got rice uh, prices slightly lower in the month of April, down from their recent highs and very, very flat year to date. Soybean, which again is one of the most traded commodities when it comes to agriculture in the world, down over 5.6% in the month of April, down almost 19 or 20% from its recent highs, down over 5.7% year to date. Corn, another really important and you know very, very significant in terms of trading volumes, global trading volumes for this commodity, uh, down over 7.3% in April, down 21% from its recent highs, and down 12% on a year to date basis. So, so far, looks pretty good. And then not to mention eggs are also lower significantly. We do have sugar prices. Now cane is up 21% in the month of April uh, and 41 or 47% on a year to date basis. And coffee prices are also up in the month of April, up over 19%, actually 9% and almost 13% on a year, year to date basis. Uh, when it comes to metals and materials, we got copper prices significantly lower in April and also down you know, over 23% from their recent highs, still up on the year. Aluminum's also down from its recent highs, up in April, up on a year to date basis as well. Iron ore significantly down in the month of April, down uh, from its recent highs and down on a year to date basis. Steel prices lower in April, lower from their recent highs, but still somehow up 49% on a year to date basis. And again, these are the ticker symbols. So you can actually check these for yourself on TradingView if you want to, you can kind of plug those numbers in. Uh, some of them are gonna be futures. So we're looking at commodity futures here. And uh, lumber prices, of course, down almost 80% from their highs and down over 6% from a year to date basis. Cotton prices are flat on the year, but down over 2%. Platinum prices were up in the month of April. So platinum and aluminum were up in the month of April. Everything else was down. And when it comes to food and agriculture, sugar prices and coffee was up in the month of April. Everything else was down, especially what we're tracking here. And gasoline was down over 4%. Uh, crude oil was slightly higher in the month of April and natural gas also up over 8% in the month of April. However, it is down substantially from its highs and on a year to day basis as well. So this is a little bit of a quick rundown on some of the other parts or components of inflation. And this is going to be the probability estimates that I personally have based on the bear case, base case, optimistic, and bull case for the market. So consensus, again, this is the consensus that we went over earlier in the video. And this is the same as the base case. So base case is kind of meeting expectations of what the market is expecting for inflation. Bear case is gonna be much worse than the base case. Optimistic is gonna be slightly better than the base case and bull case is gonna be significantly better than the base case. So that's really how I put these numbers into these different buckets and what the markets you know, might react to depending on what the numbers are. So for example, consensus is the same as the base case, 0.4% month over month headline CPI, 5% on a year over year basis. 
uh, 0.5% for core month over month and for year over year core sitting at 5.5%. But if these numbers are higher than what the consensus expectations are, that's gonna be the very case. Of course, the market's not gonna like the fact that inflation is once again accelerating. We're seeing a bit of an increase of 0.4% or higher month over month, 0.5% or higher on a core basis month over month. And year over year, we're once again pushing higher to over 5% and core, uh, you know, for headline, we're pushing past over 5% and for core, we're pushing past 5.6%. So that's gonna be the bear case for the market. Optimistic is gonna be slightly better. Uh, you know, less than 0.4%, less than 5%, less than 0.5 and less than 5.5% for again, for headline and for core CPI. And bull case is gonna be deflation. If we actually see prices going down, we haven't really seen deflation yet, at least not on an aggregate basis. We've seen individual uh, components of inflation show us deflation, like energy prices have been down year over year. We've got used car prices down year over year, but we haven't seen on an aggregate basis, overall CPI show us deflation just yet. So that's gonna be the most optimistic, most bull case scenario because that's really what's going to create that soft landing um, you know assumption in the market once again because inflation's coming down the labor market's super tight the federal reserve can kind of take a break here and they don't have to be so aggressive with their interest rate hike so that's really what the bull case is going to be for the market now going back over to what elon musk has been talking about and i actually posted this six days ago in one of my other videos and uh, he pretty much mentioned that fed data has too much latency because they are looking at all this data with a lag and my recession is already here and he further goes on by saying that further rate hikes will trigger a severe recession, mark my words. And uh, between Tesla, Starlink, and Twitter, I may have more real-time global economic data in one head than anyone ever. Because of course, Elon Musk controls three to four different large organizations and companies. So he definitely are, is dealing with a lot of manufacturers, a lot of pricing points, a lot of logistics, log logistical issues, a lot of different aspects of the business. So he definitely has a lot more insight into where the prices are, how the economy is doing, and he's already warned us of a potential severe recession if the Federal Reserve continues to raise rates. Now, the market is very optimistic with respect to interest rates. As I've already mentioned, two consecutive pauses right now is what the market's pricing in and then consistent cuts all the way down to 2.75 to 3%. I think we're now looking at 10 cuts from the market. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So still nine cuts right now is what the market's pricing in at the moment over the next 12 to 14 months. So that's where we are with inflation. Uh, inflation expected to slow down again, but we are expected to stagnate a little bit sideways for headline CPI and for core to also slightly be lower. Uh, but again, the bottom line is gonna be, how does shelter perform? Is rent prices gonna continue to come down or are they gonna still keep going higher? Food prices is gonna be the second piece and of course, energy. Three things, food, shelter, energy, that's really what's gonna drive inflation and I've already gone over the market's expectation. If we do see some optimistic to bull case scenarios kind of here and there, it's possible the market see that as a very good positive and respond in a very nice way of pushing higher. But of course, anything that's a base case or a bear case, uh, it's possible that we start to roll right back down and get rejected at those resistances. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us. For the first time, the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining us. And uh, again, the first week of the month is the best time to join. You get access to all the binds alerts, options alerts, trade ideas. Everything's going to be included. As always, happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.